So hey, you know Nintendo, right? Well, if you do, you should know that they made a lot of series. But I also think you underestimate just how many they've made. Literally dozens, if not hundreds, of individual games, series, and franchises have been published by this company, spanning practically every style, tone, and genre humans could ever envision. And with so many, it was inevitable that they would eventually begin to make references to each other. And I'm not talking about Smash. Over the years, Nintendo has made a habit of including fun nods and references to their other series. These can range from characters making physical cameos, unlockable costumes, or familiar music stings. They can even cross over with third-party franchises, creating a sort of extended family of series that can be associated with their platform and their own series just as strongly as the main ones. So of course I got to thinking. How many franchises cameo in other series, and with those cameos, could we feasibly link the entire Nintendo and Extended Universe catalog into one single universe? A massive Q that needs an even bigger A, and A, I, am here to offer. Some ground rules, we're not talking about Smash at all, as that would be too easy. How are they all connected? They're all on Smash. Adieu. However, we will be talking about every franchise that is represented within Smash. This will give us a massive, yet definite number of franchises to speak of and connect. 231 in total by my own count. So, can we connect each and every single one together? I sure hope so. That'd be sweet. So, where should we start? Well, I decided to split this up into three manageable chunks, grouping various series together based on how they're represented in Smash. To begin, we're going to talk about the primary franchises. The universe is represented in Smash with either a playable character or a stage. Because of the aforementioned representation, I think it's safe to assume these series hold a special place in Nintendo's eyes and are a cut above the rest. And the first one we're going to connect is, of course, Mario. Smash recognizes Mario, Donkey Kong, Yoshi, and Wario as four different universes. It's easy to say they all take place in the same universe. DK and Mario both debuted in the same game, Donkey Kong, and Yoshi and Wario debuted in main series Mario platformers before gaining their own franchises. On top of that, Baby DK and Baby Wario appear in Yoshi's Island DS, and Yoshi makes a cameo in DKC2 as part of Cranky's Hero Rankings, so it's safe to affirm they are all linked. However, Wario series is where things get interesting. As any well-versed WA fan will tell you, WarioWare introduced Ninevolt, a massive Nintendo fan who owns every console they ever made. His microgames are also based on a plethora of new and old Nintendo classics. This, of course, means that the company who makes WarioWare exists within the world of WarioWare, and by proxy, the worlds of Mario, Yoshi, and DK. Now, it's not exactly clear if WarioWare is truly canon to Mario. We know Wario Land is probably is, as the first Wario Land is also the third Mario Land, but the closest we get to WarioWare in the main series is the Wario Bike in Mario Kart Wii and the Diamond City Race Course in Mario Kart Arcade. Other than that, it tends to be kept the most distant of the Mario Extended Universe, but the main point I'm making is that the games appearing as microgames in WarioWare could in fact mean that they did happen within the Mario slash Wario universe regardless. Perhaps in this world, Nintendo games are biographical, interactive retellings of the hero's adventures and ancient legends that surround them. Finally, before we move on, I'll also mention Wrecking Crew is connected to the 4 as well, as it's a Mario spin-off series and God's own microgames in WarioWare. And yes, Smash counts this as a universe separate from Mario, though admittedly somewhat inconsistently, so it gets its own footnote. Hoopla. With the Mario cast forging the base of our universal tree, let's start branching off to the other series. We'll begin with the Legend of Zelda series, which actually connects to all four of the major Mario series. Link appears in Mario Kart A as a racer, in DKC2 as part of Cranky's Heroes rankings, and in WarioWare via various minigames. As for Yoshi, some enemies from Yoshi's Island, Boo Blahs, show up in Link's Awakening, now named Goo Spectres. Next is Metroid, which is connected to Wario via microgames and Mario via a cameo in Super Mario RPG, alongside Link, funnily enough. There are also several cameos in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, with Metroid and Samus' gunship making various background appearances. 
Next is Kirby, which actually has a number of noteworthy connections brought to us courtesy of Kirby Superstar's Great Cave Offensive. See, in said mode, there are 60 treasures scattered about to collect, including several items referencing other series. Of the ones we've already mentioned, there's a Koopa Shell, a DK Barrel, the Triforce, a Screw Attack, and Wario's Bucket from Mario & Wario. Of the ones we have not mentioned, there's Captain Falcon's Helmet from F-Zero, a Mr. Saturn from Earthbound, Marv's Falchion from Fire Emblem, and a Golden Watering Can from Animal Crossing. What's especially interesting is that of these nine series, seven of them have confirmed instances of space travel, with Zelda and Fire Emblem being the odd men out. Meaning it's possible this underground labyrinth is some version of Hyrule or Arcania several centuries after the events of their series, while the other artifacts are merely leftovers from the other worlds traveling to this one. Extraordinarily interesting. Anyway, next is Star Fox, which shares some additional ties to F-Zero. The big one is James McCloud, Fox's father, being a racer in both X and GX. Granted, it wasn't until GX where he started resembling Fox, but perhaps this means F-Zero takes place before the events of Star Fox, when James was alive and working as a racer part-time. Furthermore, one of the endings of Star Fox Command had Fox give up being a hero and join the G-Zero Grand Prix, a possible offshoot or spin-off of F-Zero. Now, of the ten major series that got fighters in Smash 4, Pokemon is the only one that we have not mentioned. And amazingly, it doesn't have many direct connections to the others. Sure, there are some cameos by Nintendo hardware and even a Mario & Wario reference, but nothing concrete that firmly plants it in the same universe as the rest of the group. The closest I was able to dredge up was Wario Land 3, which features a treasure called the Pocket Pet, a clear reference to the Tamagotchi-esque Pokemon Pet Toys, suggesting the Pokemon games do indeed exist within Wario slash Mario World. Now, whether they share the biographical capabilities as the others is up in the air, but at the very least, the definite plausibility. From here, a lot of the major series that remain are somewhat small and simple to connect. There's Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, and Duck Hunt, which all got microgames in WarioWare, Game & Watch, with Mr. Game & Watch appearing in DKC Returns, and Game & Watch Gallery with Mario, there's Pikmin, with the Pikmin themselves making a minor cameo in Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, and Splatoon and Rob both got more racers in Mario Kart 8 and DS respectively. Returning to Animal Crossing, it features several furniture items and even in-world NES games to collect, based on Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Star Fox, F-Zero, and Pikmin, and most notably, the balance board for Wii Fit. Punch-Out is also an easy one, as both Mario and DK make appearances within this series. The last Nintendo universe we have to talk about is Xenoblade, and like Pokemon, this one has remained amazingly independent of any crossover nonsense. The closest we got is Breath of the Wild, featuring an unlockable costume based on Rex's outfit. The only other remote connection is in another crossover series called Project X-Zone, which features Fiora and Metal Face from Xenoblade Chronicles alongside Krom and Lucina from Fire Emblem. Obviously, this doesn't anchor this world directly with the others, but it's possible this crossover does heap at a deeper connection between these worlds. Maybe the Fire Emblem slash Nintendo universe is in very close proximity to the Xenoblade world, or maybe Xeno 1 is in a different dimension, while Xeno 2 is set within the Nintendo multiverse, keeping to what I believe is the lore of Xenoblade and explaining the possible cameo in Breath of the Wild. The mind boggles at the possibility. Anyway, with the first party series done, let's run down the third parties. Firstly, there's the obvious one, Sonic. Sonic has teamed up with Mario to partake in the Olympics, and he's met Zelda and Yoshi in DLC for Sonic Lost World. What's less simple is Pac-Man, who met Mario and friends in the Mario Kart Arcade series. Now, Pac is extremely important, as the elements of several other third-party series, as well as all the Namco series. Firstly, there's Street Fighter Cross Tekken, which is of course a crossover between Street Fighter and Tekken, and featured both Pac-Man and Mega Man as DLC fighters. Now, it's debatable how much this should count, since these are different versions of Pac and Mega, but Pac-Man's continuity is nebulous enough that I think that doesn't really matter too much, and Mega Man does feature multiple universes of its own, namely with Battle Network and Star Force existing separate of the other major series. 
On that note, both Street Fighter and Tekken have crossed over with Fatal Fury before, so we can add that as well. Mario has also crossed over with Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy in Fortune Street, Mario Hoops, and Sports Mix. Final Fantasy characters are also present in Kingdom Hearts, linking these universes. In this case, Final Fantasy is a series where every game is set in a different world with unique characters and some shared elements, like Moogles. Variants of these are present in Kingdom Hearts, likely being the KH world of some related offshoot dimension, and possibly explain the Final Fantasy characters from the mentioned Mario spin-offs. This next one will require some build-up. So you know Bomberman? Well, Bomberman is repped in Smash via Assist Trophy, and the crossover with Wario in Wario Blast. Now in all fairness, this game is a reskin version of Bomberman GP for Western audiences, but it's fun, so what else? The limited story establishes Bomberman exists in another world, apparently close enough to be linked to Wario World via Portal. Bomberman himself also appears in Dream Mix TV World Fighters, a Smash-esque fighting game featuring characters like Optimus Prime, some dude from Beyblade, and some Japanese Barbie brand. It also features Solid Snake and what I assume to be the trashy version of Simon Belmont, connecting Metal Gear and Castlevania to the larger multiverse as well. Thankfully, the remaining four worlds are easy ones to speak of. Bayonetta features costumes based on Mario and Zelda, which feature an actual Chain Chomp and an R-Wing, showing these worlds are close if not in the same universe. Banjo-Kazooie is even more blatant, with Banjo appearing as a racer in Diddy Kong Racing. Minecraft also gets a Mario love with the Mario mashup texture pack, alongside other textures based on Sonic, Mega Man, and Pac-Man. And finally, Persona 5 characters appear in a crossover with Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, what I assume is a trashy gacha mobile game the Japanese love so much. Incredibly, we are still not done with the primary universes, as now we need to mention the ones with no characters, but stages instead. Firstly, there's Nintendo DS, which appears as one of the systems Ninefold owns, of course. Next is Balloon Fight, which crossed over with Zelda via Tingle's Balloon Fight. I wonder where that fits on the timeline. Nintendogs features several items based on other series, such as Mario and Pikmin, though whether they are set in the same world is debatable. I mean, dogs do exist in Mario, so there's not really anything disproving it, and I want to push this till it can't be pushed anymore, so, you know. Speaking of Mario, though, Mario Kart 7 has two tracks based on Woohoo Island, a setting from Wii Fit that also appears in Wii Sports Resort and Pilot Wings Resort, linking Wii Sports and Pilot Wings to this world. Then there's Tamadachi Life, which features several Nintendo systems as collectible items, similar to WarioWare. I'll choose to highlight Rob's inclusion to link it to the collective universe as well. Finally, there's Find Me Slash Street Past Me Plaza, which is probably the most tenuous link of them all. The only real thing are the puzzle swap picks depicting various series, such as Mario, Zelda, Kirby, Metroid, Pikmin, Fire Emblem, and so on. If we continue using the logic of Nintendo games exist within the Nintendo universe, this can be seen as additional merch based on the heroes and their legendary stories, I do does think. Now that we've connected all the primary universes, they'll offer a strong base to link all the remaining series together. To start, let's talk about secondary universes. These are series that are repped by various smaller character cameos, namely assist trophies, items, and enemies slash bosses. We already mentioned Bomberman being connected to Wario, but we can also connect the Color TV game and Sheriff universes to Wario, as both got microgames based on them. Galaga also got repped in Pac-Man World Rally, connecting those two series together. It also means that the three series that were released in the 70s are all connected, which is a moderately nifty tidbit. Keeping with the Namco series, Dig Dug can be connected to Pac-Man via Pukas, enemies who have made various appearances in Pac-Man-related games, namely the World series. I also need to add that Mappy appeared in Pac-Man World Rally on PSP, linking these two together. Then there's Rally-X and Xevious, which are connected to Galaxian and Mappy, respectively via Namco Museum on PS1. Now I know that this will raise some eyebrows, but don't worry, I'll go more in depth on that decision later when we're talking about the other Namco series. Next is Devil World, which actually opens a bunch more connections. Firstly, Wario has appeared in a Devil World microgame in Get It Together. Furthermore, the devil from the game appears in Captain Rainbow, linking those games together. Also in Captain Rainbow is Takamaru from the Mysterious Murasame Castle, a game that got an attraction based off of it in Nintendo Land. Boo! Four games linked together, 
through various cameos. That probably don't mean anything. Oh yeah. As far as secondary universes go, Captain Rainbow also features Lip from Penaldepon and the infantry from Nintendo Wars. Next, a few series linked to Mario and Friends. The Excite series can be linked to Mario through the race course in Mario Kart 8 and a microgame in WarioWare. Clue Clue Land also got a microgame, and the main hero Bubbles appears in DK King of Swing as an unlockable multiplayer character. The SNES SimCity can be linked to Mario through Bowser's cameo as the City Wrecking Monster, and Super Scope 6, the universe that I'm choosing to classify the Super Scope item in Smash under, got a microgame based on it in WarioWare. Now, for another more complex one. Nintendo Badge Arcade features various badges based on other series, including Mario, Kirby, Zelda, and Splatoon. Another possible instance of video game merch existing within the Nintendo universe, as it were. There are also badges depicting Nintendo systems and game carts, suggesting these games do exist within the universe, even just as games. Many of these we'll discuss more later, but for now just know that Joy Mech Fight and Sin and Punishment are among them. Kaeru no Tame ni Kane wa Naru is interesting, as it connects to both the Badge Arcade via a cartridge bad, and also Link's Awakening with a cameo of Prince Richard. Not sure if this is real, considering Link's Awakening was basically a prolonged dream sequence, but I think it's plausible at least. Switching gears to third party, Virtua Fighter is crossover with Sonic in Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing. And Perfect Dark gets a small reference alongside other rare games in Banjo-Tooie. Some Perfect Dark's maps are also shared with GoldenEye 007, which I fully understand is such a granular connection that likely means nothing at all, but maybe Perfect Dark's combat simulator is based on information from other secret agents of the past, including some iteration of James Bond. And that is a very remarkably entertaining thought indeed, okay? And yes, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark are represented in Smash, just, <laughs> just to get that far out of the way. Kururin holds the award for probably the most recent addition to the Nintendo Connected Universe, with a card of the game appearing in Pikmin 4. The legendary Starfy is connected to Wario, as he made an appearance in Starfy's third game, and Monster Hunter is connected to Metal Gear, as several monsters appear in Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. Then there's Golden Sun, which apparently is referenced in Animal Crossing on the GameCube, with Culliver mentioning having visited the game's Karagol Sea. I'll level with you though, I was not able to confirm this appearance, I wasn't able to find any screenshots, and I certainly am not going to play the game on the off-random chance that the dialogue just so happens to show up, but it does also appear in the Badge Arcade as a cart badge too, so I guess it does still count. Fatal Frame has an equally loose connection, with some unlockable outfits and Nintendo installments based on Mario, Luigi, and Zero Suit Samus. Given the iconic status of those outfits, I think it's safe to label this as another exists as a game within the game scenario. A similar case exists for Drill Dozer, where Jill can unlock some Mario overalls for herself. Then there's Jam with the Band, which features even more Badge Arcade badges, and Brain Age, which has a micro game in WarioWare. And on that note, WarioWare and Rhythm Heaven have crossed over on several occasions on both ends, since they are made by the same dev team. Mopping up the last few, Art Academy has crossed over with Pokemon, Steel Diver is wrapped with a vehicle in Mario Kart 8, Swap Notes Nikki got a few arcade badges, and for one last lengthier connection, Minecraft features a costume based on Commander Video from Bit Trip, and Bit Trip Runner 3 has a playable character appearance by Shovel Knight. And now it's time for the big voluptuous boy, the tertiary universes. These are the series that Smash represents with various minor elements, including music, trophies, stickers, spirits, Mii Fighter costumes, fighter movesets. Basically, this is just the miscellaneous category. This is also where the vast majority of the series represented in Smash come in, since it's much easier to import a 3D model and stick it on a trophy base rather than craft a playable fighter or stage. To begin, let's talk about some games we brought up in the lack section, starting with Nintendo Badge Arcade. Among the games seen as cartridge badge, there are X, Mole Mania, Marvelous, Card Hero, Napoleon, Senen Kazoku, and Personal Trainer Cooking. There are also badges based on Tank Troopers, Box Boy, Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, and Pushmo. NES Remix also receives some badges, and has minigames based on Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Kirby, and others. 
New connectors here include Urban Champion, Tennis, Baseball, and Ice Hockey. Tennis can also be seen as a game within a minigame in Kiki Trick, and Baseball, alongside other NES games like Wrecking Crew, gets sprites to use in the art style series game Pictobit, a spiritual successor to Bit Generation slash Digilux, which is represented in Smash Bros. Brawl via stickers. Keep pay attention to all this now, it will be on the test. Moving back to Captain Rainbow, the game also features Mappo from Giftpia and Drake Redcrest from Chibi Robo. The latter game also has a cameo of the Eggplant Man from Wrecking Crew. It also features Hikari from Shin Onigashima, who, alongside Donbei, cameo in Kirby's Dream Land 3, with Goku and Chao from Yuyuki. There's also a Shin Onigashima treasure in Pikmin 4, alongside a GameCube disc for Wave Race Blue Storm. Blue Storm features characters from the 1080 series as well, linking all of this together into one giant... <laughs> what, web? I, 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 this, that is what this is. This is a web, but like... God. Now let's talk Namco series. Namely, Namco Museum on PS1. Or PS1, if you want to be phonetic. You'd assume rightly that the PS1 museums are like other installments, merely offering a list of ROMs to play. However, the PS1 games feature a 3D museum to explore, with exhibits themed after each game. It's played in the first-person view, so we never see who we are, but given the little Pac-Man sprite and his appearance in the opening, it's safe to assume that we play as the Pac-Pac himself, suggesting these games and characters all exist in one world. Furthermore, the sixth PS1 game, Namco Museum Encore, while it did away with the 3D museum, it does feature the previous five museums in its intro, confirming that they all exist in the same universe as well. All of this is to say that these PS1's games can be used to reasonably bridge together a bunch of retro Namco titles. Galaxian is represented in Volume 1, as is Rally X and Bostconian, Mappy is in Volume 2 with Xevious and Dragon Buster, Did Dug is in Volume 3 with the Babylonian Castle Saga series, and Pac-Man himself gets rep on Volume 5, and some other volumes of course, connecting Baraduke, Metro Cross, Dragon Spirit, and Valkyrie. Encore also throws in King and Balloon, Sky Kid, and Wonder Momo into all of this as well. Real quick since we're here though, I'll also bring up the remaining Namco series. The Tales of series features summons from both Tower of Juraga and Valkyrie, as well as enemies that appear to be the same enemies from Libble Rabble, connecting these together. Next, Don Chan from Taiko no Tatsujin is present in Mario Kart Arcade GP DX, connecting it to Pac-Man and Mario. Some Taiko games also feature songs from Yokai Dochuki, Thunder Scepter, and Bravo Man. Finally, the Prince from Katamari is in Pac-Man World Rally, and Pac is present on some of the Magnus in Bait and Kaitos, being called a legendary hero from the past. Probably the last major bastion of connections comes in the last few WarioWare microgames, namely Hogan's Alley, Wild Gunman, Mock Rider, Shantae, Famicom Detective Club, and Big Brain Academy. After that, though, all the rest of the series can be briefly brought up with a single sentence, so it's arguably all downhill from here. Full disclosure, some of these connections are extremely loose and tenuous, a few boiling down to simple costumes or even music tracks. However, I also believe that, given all the series we've connected so far, if we just go ahead and assume they're all in one universe, said universe is large and varied enough to reasonably include all of these other series in there circumstantially. Like, if Wii Sports is canon to Mario, then the other Wii series likely are too, even if there's minimal concrete evidence to back it up. Yakumen crossed over with Mario in Yakumen DS. Famicom Grand Prix features Mario and Luigi as racers. Rayman and the Rabbids both crossed over in Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope. They also crossed over with each other, obviously. Both Wii Party and Style Savvy feature costumes featuring Mario. We Play featured the ducks from Duck Hunt in its shooting gallery. We Music features several songs from Mario, Zelda, F Zero, and We Sports. Ring Fit Adventure also features music from its spiritual successor, We Fit. A volleyball player is also in Super Mario Maker as a mystery mushroom outfit. Eternal Darkness's Alexandra Royvis cameos in a magazine in Metal Gear The Twin Snakes. Castlevania Harmony of Despair has DLC levels based on Getsu Fumaden. Both Metal Gear and Castlevania also have characters in Konami Crazy Racers alongside Goemon. Battle Clash uses the Super Scope, connecting it to Super Scope 6 in a tenuous way, probably. 
Tetris DS features several themes from other series, such as Mario, Zelda, Metroid, and Ice Climber. It also crossed over with Pokémon, as did Harmonite with its bonus stages. The first game in the Tower series was Sim Tower, counted as an installment of both the Tower and Sim City series. Codename Steam features Fire Emblem characters, and Glory of Heracles DS name drops Marth's home Arcania, which is not, not entirely sure about this one. Not, not sure if they just like made up the name or if it like actually exists in, in fairy tales or, or what have you. AR games features cards based on Mario, Zelda, Metroid, Kirby, and Pikmin. Metopia features several amiibo costumes based on the likes of Mario, Zelda, Mother, and various others. Lappy from Astral Chain cameos in Bayonetta 3, and Bayonetta, Gion, and Roden cameo in The Wonderful 101. Trace Memories slash Another Code has a hidden book called The Legend of Zelda Chronology, and the captain from the game is hinted to be the husband of Rosa Fox from Hotel Dusk, connecting all of these to one universe. Link's Master Sword is also present in the Switch version of Skyrim, being an ancient relic from a forgotten era. The Elder Scrolls was also referenced in Doom 2016, via a skeleton with the Dragonborn helmet and an arrow in its knee, of course. Soccer shows up as an unlockable NES game in the GameCube Animal Crossing, and R-Wings make cameo appearances in Stunt Race FX. An Afterburner-inspired race course appears in Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. Barbara from Jam with the Band cameos in English Training. Street Fighter Cross All Capcom features characters from Street Fighter and Mega Man, as well as Ghosts and Goblins, Devil May Cry, and Resident Evil. SNK vs. Capcom also features fighters from Ikari Warriors, who also appears from the Metal Slug series. Ikari and Fatal Fury are also both referenced. Ikari and Fatal Fury are also both repped in the King of Fighters, alongside Art of Fighting, Athena, and Samurai Showdown. The title character of Athena is also the ancestor of Athena Asamaya from Psycho Soldier. Another SNK crossover, Neo Geo Coliseum, also features elements from Alpha Mission. Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes has unlockable shirts based on Bit Trip and also Undertale. An arsenal from Damon X Machina also shows up in No More Heroes 3, though specified as coming from another dimension, suggesting that they are connected but not the same. Final Fantasy XV had a crossover promotion based on Assassin's Creed, and Braid Exvius also had a promotion with Bravely Default. Bravely Default characters also show up in Octopath Traveler's mobile game, Champions of the Continent, and several Final Fantasy elements, such as the Chocobos, appear in its spiritual spin-off, Mana. And that is all of the game, series, and franchises I was able to find some reasonable connections for. Oh, good god, that's a lot of them, isn't it? Which raises the question of how many were we able to link? Well, I'm sure someone was keeping track while going through this, but of the 231 series represented, we were able to link... Drumroll, please? <laughs> 183. Not quite all of them, but still an amazing feat. So, which ones couldn't be linked? Of the primary universes, there's ARMS, Electroplankton, and Miiverse. Of the secondary ones, Custom Robo and Dylan's Rolling Western. And of the tertiary ones, oh god. River City, Telero Boxer, Fallout, Cold Sept, Sute Hakun, Hajimari no Mori, Doshin the Giant, Chalian, Magical Star Sign, Tomato Adventure, Cubivore, Owendon, Calciobit, Project Hacker, Chozuju Mecha MG, Kurika Nano Island Story, Number Battle, Slide Adventure Mad Kid, Ash Archaic Sealed Heat, Make 10 A Journey of Numbers, Soma Bringer, Fossil Fighters, Disaster Day of Crisis, Tact of Magic, Zenkeki no Reginlave, The Last Story, Pandora's Tower, Freaky Forms, Sakura Samurai, Warframe, Nintendo G, Snimberclips, Ever Oasis, Cuphead, Nintendo Labo, Sushi Striker, and Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. Now, in all fairness, there's a high chance I missed something somewhere, but it's fairly obvious why some of these couldn't be connected. Some are relevant enough they could cross over at any time, but many don't have enough legacy to warrant getting referenced alongside the all-time classics. Like, I'm willing to bet this is the first time some of you have ever heard of stuff like Make 10 and Luxley's lineup. So it makes sense Nintendo wouldn't care enough to properly tie them into this massive connected universe. And more recent games like Sushi Strikers and ARMS haven't been given the chance to grow a long-standing legacy of any kind. 
course, in all fairness, they are repped in Smash, like I said, so I guess they are also connected. With that, though, here we are. The entire Nintendo universe linked together into one giant web. Admittedly, I don't really have a grand conclusion, I just thought this would be really neat, and it was. That said, if Nintendo were to ever make an action-adventure crossover with all their series, we can at least say that there is a solid basis to bridge their worlds together into one super mega world. Either that, or the ramblings of a bored lunatic. <laughs>